Good evening and welcome to the May 24th, 2021 City Council meeting for the City of Lamar. I'm Mayor Kres Kirk Crespin. Uh, tonight, uh, we, do, we do have somewhat of a busy evening. We have a couple of uh, nice presentations with the new officer being sworn in. Um, so I'll just kind of keep it short. I'm glad we're having the great weather we're having. I'm, uh, hopefully the hail and the tornadoes stay away and we just get the moisture, but uh, we are appreciative of that moisture and hopefully we can continue to get some of that as we move forward. Um, as of right now, we'll have Galen Burnett for the invocation to start off with. Father, it's always a privilege to, to be able to talk to you. And so tonight we wanna to ask for your special blessing and direction upon our city council. Father, we thank you for our city council and the, the administration and, the, and the, all the workers that make us um, enjoy the city of Lamar. Father, we pray that you would just be given the, our city council members insight and wisdom to make the decisions that they have to, uh, help them to have a good discussion and help them to know what they need to be deciding. Father, we pray that you'll just be continuing to put your blessing upon our city. We thank you for the moisture we've received lately. But we ask that you do continue to keep the, the tornadoes and the hail and, and the disastrous things away. Father, we thank you for that. Father, we just give ourselves to you, anticipating your work in us and through us. And we do this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, the time is now 702. I'll call the meeting to order. Roll call. Joe Gonzalez. Here. Rafael Rodriguez. Here. Jerry Jenkins. Kurt Crespin. Here. Oscar Riley. Here. Manuel Tamez. Anne Marie Crampton. Here. Kristen McRae. Here. Lance Park. Here. Uh, tonight, to start off, we do have a, a brief presentation. Um, the city has been working for the last few months um, with a company called City by App. And we do, the City by App is basically a, a mobile app that you would use on your phone, your tablet, um, that would work in conjunction with um, the different parts of our community, whether it be the recreation activities or emergency services or the, when there's downtime as far as um, blocking the streets and other things. But it would also help integrate with other organizations like the Chamber and, and PEP and let the community know what activities and events are happening. So we've um, been inquiring about this app for quite a while now. And Martha Alvarez, our communications director, has been working with City by App to get more information on that. Due to the time frame, we wanted to put this earlier in the in the meeting so we can get that taken care of and, and move forward. So Martha, are we ready for that? Quick presentation. I believe so. Are you ready, Jerome? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Well, thank you, uh, everybody. I thank really you, appreciate uh, everybody. I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to uh, speak opportunity with you today. To, uh, speak with you today. And uh, I get a little bit of an and, echo uh, when I, I talk. I can hear your room I talk, later. I hear your room later. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I'll try to work through that. <laughs> but uh, I really just want to thank you again for the opportunity to present City by App to your community and to your county. Um, I want to thank Martha uh, and uh, your former uh, city manager in Lamar for their forward thinking leadership and for the way that they are putting uh, technology forward in a time in our lives when uh, being on smartphones and even broadcasting this way on Zoom is becoming more and more part of our lives, our daily lives. And so with that, I'd like to go into this presentation. Uh, what it will do is outline everything that we will be providing uh, for your county uh, in the way of the software platform, which includes a mobile app and an online experience too. So City by App is our company. Uh, our catchphrase is get connected, be rewarded. Um, we know when people get connected to their community, they will be rewarded. 
they'll be more informed and they'll be more a part of what's happening. We are a professionally licensed Apple and Android mobile app development company. Um, we uh, take a lot of pride in, in this uh, uh, distinction and we are really excited about our mission, which is to serve communities with an affordable cutting edge technology solution. The problem we solve is very simple. Community information is simply hard to find. Generally, people have to just Google or Bing or you know Yahoo <laughs> just to find their local information or even using Yelp. Uh, and it just can be very difficult, especially to manage on a, on a smartphone. Uh, the solution is to organize all your community information, your county, your cities, the Chamber of Commerce, the local businesses, police and fire, so all your emergency services, all funneled into one place to look. And we beautifully customize it to showcase the uniqueness of your county, including the cities, the prowess, economic prosperity. And uh, this just allows everybody to go to one place and they can connect with all these things that are in the menu, which includes like an inbox, uh, where alerts show up. We'll talk about that later. Um, we do seek out the support of some title sponsors, which we'll talk about later. Uh, the shop local program, the calendar, local news, uh, town contact, or you know, your city contact or county contacts. This is an example that I put in here from another uh, city that we work with. Your park programs, real estate, local jobs, uh, any kind of bill pay services can all be connected here. And uh, this is just a great way to centralize everything. We publish uh, the mobile app for City by App on your uh, most popular platforms, which is the App Store for Apple and the Google Play Store for Android devices. City by App, we take a lot of pride in this in that we are a family-friendly safe space that contributes to and supports strong and vibrant communities. Apple has given us a four plus rating what that means is that there's no objectionable content on the app, and Google has given us an E everyone rating. Think of it kind of like a G-rated movie. You know, we keep it all family-friendly and safe for everyone in your community. The key features, I'd like to get into that now, live alerts. This is one of the most powerful features, and I, I heard during the, the wonderful prayer uh, a little bit about, uh, the, you know, tornadoes and different safety things going on. Uh, in your county and uh, sending out an alert. Uh, some of them happen automatically on our phones, uh, but now you'll have access to an alert system too that can send out a message uh, related to whether it's a weather alert or just a, a fun event happening in your community. And in this example, uh, on the phone, it popped up and it just said, thank you for downloading our app. And people can click on there and share the app with their family and friends. It's just a great way to get the word out. Uh, and then in the middle of the screen, you notice there's like a map and you could set up what they call a geofencing alert. And this is nice for when people are driving in a certain part of the county, you can pop up a notification about maybe a traffic related event or construction happening soon, just so they're aware of what's happening uh, in the county. And this is another great way to use that. One of the coolest parts about City by App is that when people download the app and use the app, they'll get an inbox where all the messages that pop up on their phone are stored. And this is for the person who downloads the app for the very first time, who maybe just moved to the community. Here they can see what's been going on rather than maybe joining an email alert for the first time and waiting for the message to come. You know, So it's just a great way for everyone to stay informed, including visitors. The live alerts allow you to uh, put, pop up a notification about anything that you want to talk about, whether it be, in this case, the city uh, was going to do a rain barrel or composters that were available at City Hall. And when the alert comes in, you could tap on it and it redirects people where they want to go. And in this case, they took them right to the city's website where the information is and where they can place the order. If there's any support that's needed for this, City by App provides all that, but there's also online help desk. So you could just simply log in and read the article about how to do a push notification. But we fully support uh, the county in this way. Events, your uh, 
Obviously, the cities, the county, uh, the different businesses are all doing events. We consolidate all this information in one place to look. And this includes the county, uh, the Chamber of Commerce. And you can see here with the highlighted area for the chamber, this shows their calendar right in the app. Local government directory. Uh, this is a great way now where people can open it up and they can contact the city of their choice, the county directly, um, you name it, it'll be all here, including you know, animal control or the police or fire non-emergency numbers. We consolidate your incident report forms. If you already have incident report forms that have been provided, maybe on different websites, we put those all here in one place. And if somebody reports a gas leak or they wanna know how to report a power outage, they get directed to the right department to do that, the power company, right? Or the gas company, instead of calling city hall. <laughs> and uh, we really uh, know how important that is to keep people connected to where they belong. If for any reason, uh, you would like us to customize a form for you, uh, and as you can see on the right-hand side, we made a report lost or found animal uh, form for uh, a city out in California. And this was just a great way for them to connect uh, a lost or found animal to the shelter, and then it could get back to the owner as soon as possible. We consolidate all the local jobs in one place to look. This includes, of course, from the cities, the county, and you can post and publish uh, jobs on our platform also. Shop local. I get really excited about this because this is really what separates City by App from pretty much any other developer you'll find. We include a shop local program. Uh, we understand how important supporting the local businesses are. Even now during COVID, uh, it's become more and more important. Uh, so this will be a countywide business directory showcasing every business uh, that is a licensed business or a legitimate business in your community. And the shop local program is basically this. It features all the businesses in a directory that's connected both in the app and then also online. And it will help your local exposure for your entire county uh, throughout the state then that way and throughout the country. Uh, SEO is a real important thing. Uh, it stands for search engine optimization. And so you can imagine now that you'll have a business listing for every single department business in your county published on Google, Yahoo, and Bing, you're gonna have a flood of information out there on the internet, which is just gonna help in a big, big way. Um, the business directory, uh, I just put in here a couple of slides uh, to show like if you scroll through the different categories of businesses, uh, but you'll see we put in all the education, uh, your grocery stores in the food area, home services, hotels and travel, um, pets area, public ser uh, professional services, of course, restaurants and real estate, churches, shopping, and I highlighted public services to show you that there'll be uh, all the listings for your county's public services departments will be listed there. We even have the uh, Center for Disease and Control on our website. And uh, we just saw a flood of people using that, of course, when COVID hit last year. Um, so where can people find the business directory? They can find it right in the app when we launch it, but they can also find it online, Google, Yahoo, or Bing. So if you did a search uh, like 30 days after we launched the program for your name of your business, let's say, you would find it on Google, for, on the City by App platform. The business listings are all customizable. The businesses get to log in 24 seven and manage their business listing. And they can put in some coupons and they can put information like their social media pages and so on. And they can get reviews. But what's different about City by App is what we've learned from some of the businesses not too happy with their experiences with Yelp is when they get a review, City by App reviews it to make sure it's real. We look at it. And if it is a real review and it's good, we accept it and we notify the business and we notify the customer. If it's a bad review, we notify the business and they get the information about the customer so they can contact them and try to resolve the matter. Rather than making it a public display, um, we keep it private between the business and the customer. We think that's real important. Business directory also includes 24 seven access, like I said, for content management. This is just the dashboard here 
of what it looks like when a business logs in. It's very simple to use. Uh, we think it's easier than Facebook to manage. And when, the, uh, when we launch the program, we send out a welcome email to all the businesses so that they get their credentials to log in and start using it. And if they need support, they contact us directly and we can help them. There's also a billing uh, system built into this uh, platform. Consider this a software platform that you're getting. Uh, the member admin panel includes payment options. Each business um, or citizen can add a billing information in here and they can purchase different things. In this case, it's a, a business uh, um, listing, or I'm sorry, a business license from the city, uh, or they can join the chamber. We can do payments for all these kinds of things, including tickets to events. GPS maps, there will be also not just a directory of, of listings of businesses, but there'll be a map of all the different types of business categories in your county. And you can see here, you can also view that map in a lift mode to make it a little easier to scan through. Real estate, this is really important, especially for a growing city. Uh, the county, the city, um, the cities that for that matter, the realtors can publish various types of real estate on the city by our platform. This is all set up to uh, enter homes for sale, condos, townhomes, commercial real estate, rental properties, and of course, land for sale. Title sponsorships. Uh, we use title sponsorships to offset the cost of the program. Uh, we know how important it is to have a participation from everybody. And so what we found is that businesses, there's always four or five businesses in a, in a community that really would like to support the whole idea of having an app and a shop local program. And you can see the type of brands that we've attracted in each city, uh, Remax, State Farm, Keller Williams, uh, Guaranteed Rate Mortgages, and the VCA Animal Hospitals. Uh, it's just a really great way to offset the cost. And City by App carries the burden of that uh, to help uh, you find those uh, title sponsors and we sign them up. Uh, the title sponsors are always showcased in a little special way. In the app, we have a little button on there called Title Sponsors, and it will list those sponsors in that area just to give them a little bit more of a boost so people know who's also supporting the program. And then in closing, I always like to point out the, the key points, which is this is a community promotion and consolidation system. City by App is connecting people to the county, the city, the chamber, the businesses, of course, with the shop local program, your nonprofit associations, uh, community events, parks and recreation, and police and fire. The front end of the app is customizable. Uh, we can make it look any way that the county desires, and we'll work with you to make sure we get that right. We did this uh, design ourselves, and uh, we just used it from some assets that we saw uh, on your county website. So showcasing your entire community is all that what this is about, increases your public awareness about what's happening in the community. We get to send live alerts now, keeping everyone informed about what's happening. Promote your events in the community, boost local revenue with the Shop Local program, and everything in one place to look is really at the end of the day, what's so important for everyone so they don't have to go through Google or website to website to find information. We will connect everything that your county works so hard to promote into one beautiful way to showcase it. And in uh, closing, I also like to add up that, you know, we've been very humbled uh, to have received some awards from even the White House. Um, we received the President of the United States Lifetime and Volunteer uh, Achievement Awards uh, from both uh, from Barack Obama and from most recently President Trump. A wonderful letter about that. And um, we were also the Innovation Award winner in uh, Southern California, which is, you know, a very technological county uh, or part of the country. And so the Economic Development Coalition of South West California gave us their Innovation Award. These are the peers, these are the cities and uh, the groups that we work with down there. Uh, we've gotten great reviews and support from the TEDx, uh, bro, uh, Jim McLaughlin, and also Irene Long. She was the disaster services director who just retired from the American Red Cross. She managed all the wildfires um, 
there in San Bernardino, Orange County, Riverside County in California. And so that's City by App. Uh, that's a real quick summary of what we're uh, gonna be providing for your county. And if anybody has a question, I would be more than happy to address that at this time. Do we have any questions from the council at this time, or do you want to think about this and then get back with us with questions? I just wanted to add that originally, when we were looking at a citywide app, we wanted to get it just for Lamar, but um, we thought it'd be great to get everyone involved. So we've contacted PEP and Powers County and the chamber, and we really wanted it to be uh, countywide since we're a smaller area anyway. And so that's why we're calling it a countywide app. And so um, we'd really like your support in you know, pushing this through. We, we constantly get comments on, you know, we never have one place where all the information is located. So we think this would be really great. Just for my two cents. <laughs> and I think I've said that a few times over the last year that, you know, we really wanted to start being more engaged with the community and having our community members engage with council members and our city government as well as the county. So it's a good way for us to not only interact with our community, but also with the outlying communities, uh, Grenada, Holly, Spring, or Wiley, uh, the communities in our county itself. So uh, definitely something to continue to look into. I've got a question. Um, I, I saw a big platform for a lot of advertising for businesses, and he mentioned that that could be an offset for the cost of the app. Yes. Now, mm -hmm. is he going to be responsible for collecting those fees, or does that fee money go to the city, or how does that work, I guess? Can we mm -hmm. maybe at, at some point in time get more clarification how that works to where I can understand that? Bro. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so um, the, the title sponsors, uh, the prices of the cost for the title sponsorships will be set. Uh, we will work in conjunction with Martha and uh, recommendations from the chamber on what those uh, reasonable costs would be. And then City by Act, we collect those directly and we use that to offset the cost of the program. And we give back 5% uh, of the revenue generated from that to the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and also we give back 5% uh, to a local veterans organization who does a lot of the work in your community, in your county. Uh, and so that's something that uh, we really uh, we'll work closely with Mar Martha, your chamber, and other officials in the council and so on on those recommendations. But we are responsible solely to get those signed up. If we didn't sign up any title sponsors, it wouldn't uh, affect the program at all. Um, we've been able to work with uh, Martha to reduce the cost even a little bit um, uh, over the process of negotiating this. And uh, But we have found that the title sponsors are generally uh, really do want to come on board and support this. But it's the burden of city by app to make sure that uh, they understand what it, the program offers them and it gives them a little banner that slides across um, the app when it's open just for a few seconds and rotates back to the home screen. What is the cost? Of the program? Yes, for city of city by app to launch for your county. Martha, do you have that information? Did you want to share that with them that I sent you, or did you want me to pull that up? Um, yeah, if you have it on hand, you can go ahead sure. and share that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yep. Uh, let me pull up that uh, for you. Be with me for a moment. It's seventeen. Yeah, seventeen thousand. Yeah, seven. It was. Seventeen thousand five hundred uh, a year, uh, five-year contract, uh, and uh, it was originally twenty-five thousand. And what we did is we uh, worked with Martha to find some ways to lower that cost to just make it more affordable and divide that cost amongst um, the chamber, um, the PAP, and uh, the city of Lamar, and uh, the title sponsors. Uh, if we get those on board, would be a separate from that number. But it's uh, the, the the amount that you can pay to launch this is only seventeen thousand five hundred. 
That's it. Okay. Any other questions from the council? I don't have any. And did I answer your question clearly? Right. Was there any anything else there that you wanted to know about the title sponsors? No, you you covered it. We did have somebody from the audience that would like to ask a question. But, sure. Uh, Rick Robbins, uh, Citizen Lamar, I don't have any questions. I can like to bring forth a couple of comments on that. I've seen, I uh, haven't seen this presentation, but I've had, we've talked about it several times. I am a member of PEP, uh, manager of Colorado Mills. Um, I think when you look at something like this, you have to look at it from an aspect of, you'd have to hire an individual, the city would, the county would, the chamber would, to do something like this or to have to have a site that the people could go on and see this thing. And when you look at the what this cost is, this cost is probably a fourth of the cost of what the of an individual to hire that person, you know, with benefits and salary and all that to accomplish these things. I think it's a true opportunity. Uh, I, I speak from personal experience. Um, our company in the last year and a half, everybody is telling us all the things you're doing, Colorado Mills, that's all we see. We see all the things you're doing new. Well, we've been doing new things for 10 years. We've only had that person in that spot, putting it out there for people to see the last year and a half. And so what I see this as an opportunity, yes, for our community to find out things and where things are, but you would be amazed at the people that aren't from Lamar or aren't from Eastern Colorado that wanna find out who we are, what we do, they're excited about it. We do a promotion every year called Know Your Farmer, Know Your Food Tour. We get a bus. We bring people from the city out here. And it's exciting. It's exciting to them to see this aspect. The people that are going to be moving out here, the people that are already moving out here from metro areas. And part of that's because of the pandemic. But we have to get this. I think this is an extremely opportunistic time for us to look at something like this. And I think it's a really economical uh, way to do it. Uh, Thank you. It definitely would be a great way to engage our community and to, to gather all the information and also to um, show what our community is doing and, and how it's a great place to live. So yeah. we'll definitely keep I, I talking about that in the upcoming. Yeah, thank you. I'd like yes, to share one last thing. Yeah, so what he mentioned was so important. Um, what we have found is generally when uh, an app is done for a city, it's done by, you know, it's published uh, by a private developer, right, that will publish that for just the city. And it doesn't really break the barriers of the city. It doesn't really take it outside. And we're city by app. We're, uh, we're in 143 countries. You know, we're in all the content uh, on our platform gets expanded throughout the United States as people you know, are searching out, they can be in another state and find your information. So that's really a, a thing that breaks the barriers, like you're saying, to, to connect people from outside and bring them in and attract them is really a big focus of what we're on. Great. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us tonight and giving us the presentation. We truly appreciate it. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity. Have a wonderful evening. Okay. With that said, we'll move on with the meeting. Um, we do have the consent agenda. Has everybody had the opportunity to review the consent agenda? Yes. Thank you. Okay. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda and submitted. Are there any final questions? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And vote. Opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimous. The next item on the agenda is the audience participation portion. During this portion of the meeting, anyone may speak on any subject that does not appear on the agenda. Individual speakers are limited to three minutes each, and it's at the discretion of the council if we would like to have more. Is there anybody who would like to speak to the council that's on something that's not on the agenda? 
Seeing none, if we do have any questions that uh, occur online, we will address those during the miscellaneous portion of the meeting at the end. So if you do have questions, you're welcome to ask them online and we'll address those later. Moving forward, we have the city treasurer's report. Kristen, do you have a report tonight? Um, I don't. Okay. So the next item would be the city clerk's report. And I don't have a report tonight. Okay. So the next item on the agenda would be the city administrator's report. As many of you may know that uh, Steve Gill, our city administrator resigned. He uh, last Wednesday was his last day. Um, we did have a little going away farewell for him at the end of the day on Wednesday, and it was uh, very hard to see him go. But uh, we have been moving forward within the city and continuing the projects we're working on. Just to let the people know and our community know, um, Anne-Marie Crampton, my mayor pro tem, and myself have divided up the different departments, and we are the acting interim administrators. We'll be uh, working with the city directors. You know, the, the beauty of the city of Lamar is that we have so many great um, directors on our staff that have been here for many, many years. I know when we did our uh, strategic planning meeting a few months back or a month ago, the uh, Linda Lujan was our facilitator. And as we went around the room and introduced ourselves, we started adding up all the years. And by the time that she got done, there was about 275 years worth of experience that was in that room. And it was all the directors put together, all the council members put together, and the staff. It, it really shows how much experience we have in our community. And it's because of that that Anne-Marie and I felt comfortable in taking over these roles for the interim while we uh, wait for a new city administrator. Uh, because really it's kind of on autopilot. We have strong directors, we have strong Chief uh, Miller with Chief Burkhardt, um, you know, our, our department heads are, you know, the treasurer, the clerk. It's just amazing, the dream team that we have. And I've referred to them multiple times over the last year as the dream team. And I do strongly believe that. So I do thank them for helping us get through this. Um, just as a quick update as well for the city administrator search, we did have our uh, recruitment firm that we worked with before, which was Strategic Governmental Strategies. They're the company that helped us find Steve the first time. And uh, we did engage them again to uh, continue with this new search. They closed out their search um, yesterday. However, we did extend it another week for local applicants to apply. So you can um, contact the city if you are interested in applying for the city administrator job. As of right now, we have 16 applicants um, that are highly qualified that strategic government resources have found for us. Uh, we will gather all of the applicants over the next week. And on the 7th, the council, the city council will have an executive session where we'll review all of those 16 plus whoever else may um, apply in the next week or two. And then we will uh, narrow that down that search and we'll move forward with the same process that we have done before. It was, I think we were very successful with the process we used in the past. So we're gonna keep that same recipe and try that again. And hopefully we'll have just as good of a candidate as we did with Steve. Um, the other items on the agenda for the, or on the items for city administrator report, wanted to remind everybody that Monday, May 31st, the office for city offices will be closed in observance of Memorial Day. A really big item is, and this is something I really want to encourage everybody to notice, is that on June the 4th, Friday, June the 4th, at Willow Creek Park from 5 p.m. until 7 p.m., we're going to be having a community meet and greet with the city council and the mayor and all the city staff that we can get there to attend. Um, instead of doing our monthly breakfast, we had a very little minimal turnout. We decided to put it all together into a one meet and greet. Hopefully we'll do this again in the future. But this will give everybody in the community the opportunity for a casual meet and greet. Come and talk to your council members, get to know them, ask questions, give your opinions, give your advice, um, give us suggestions on what you think we can do differently in our community. But it's a great way for us to just come out to the park. Um, we'll be having uh, hot dogs, is my understanding as well. And then afterwards, from 7 to 9 p.m., there'll be a free swim at the swimming pool. So. You're welcome to come out, bring your family, have a hot dog, meet your council members, your mayor, um, mingle afterwards. You can take the kids swimming or go swimming yourself. So I do encourage you to join us. 
Friday, June 4th at Willow Creek Park from 5 o'clock until 9 o'clock. Uh, Friends of the Library, we're having a monthly book sale on June the 4th and 5th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And then last but not least, there's a flag day, Monday, June 14th so is flag day. So I uh, will definitely want to do something there. We do have uh, quite a few changes that have been happening at the airport over the last month. As many of you may remember, the city took over as a fixed based operator or the FBO operator. And that's not only been the, the only change, we've also been changing over to the Southeast Colorado Regional Airport. And in with all this change, we've had some change of staff, we've had some change in, in the way we operate out there, but more importantly, we wanted to get that out to the public. So over the next couple of weeks, they're trying to work out all the details, but at the next meeting, we'll have a lot more details for you. But I, as, as a side note, I wanted you to please put this on your calendar. For June the 19th, we'll be having a grand opening celebration at the airport. So uh, we'll give you more of the details as they come in, but please put that on your calendar for uh, June the 19th. And then we did have along the, the same lines of that airport, we did have some uh, paperwork that needed to be done. A few weeks ago, we approved the um, agreement to purchase the assets for the airport so that the city could take over. And in doing so, Council, you'll see that there's two documents that we handed out. Inside that asset purchase agreement, we had to do an assignment agreement to where we would reassign from the previous fixed based operator to the city of Lamar, the fueling contracts, the lease agreements, and uh, Lance wanted to make sure that the Council had an opportunity to look those over. Did you want to speak on that, Lance? Sure. So we've actually discussed this, I think, three or four times now. Uh, we finally got the final uh, assignments from um, Phillips 66. One of the issues, as stated last time, is that uh, the promissory note was actually assigned to a different company. So once we thought we had the assignment, they needed to do an additional assignment for that promissory note. So you'll see there's two assignments. One of them is related to that fuel contract in addition to that uh, truck um, purchase contract as well. Yeah. And the second one is for the promissory note itself. So uh, I reviewed them. Uh, I find them appropriate. They have the necessary language for municipalities in Colorado. So I don't see any issues with them. Again, this is sort of just playing catch up for what was contained in that asset purchase agreement. So the effective date on this, which is one edit that I did make um, known to the Phillips 66 is that it was May 1st, 2021 is whenever that effective uh, date should be included and that's updated on both these agreements. Okay. So we've already approved this. There's no action. This is just more informational for the council to review. Correct. I just wanted to bring it before the council. I think it's important that you see the actual language, uh, which wasn't able to be included on in that initial agreement. Okay. All right. Well, before I move forward, um, since I'm giving the administrator report and since I have a co-administrator, did you have anything to add, Emory? No, I don't. Okay, I'll give you the opportunity. Okay. okay, moving forward, we have the um, reports and correspondence from the council. Do we have any liaison reports from the council members? Okay. Oh, board. Okay. Met on <clears throat> May 11th. They've been having uh, some theft problems on the course. So just <clears throat> discussed about putting some cameras on the course that would pick up motion. Uh, gonna make number six bunker a grass bunker instead of a sand bunker because when it rains, it washes out. Uh, they're going to purchase three new trees, eight footers a year instead of the little ones we get from the <clears throat> tree, tree board because they usually die, so they want to spend approximately a thousand dollars a year to buy big trees. Uh, minor upgrades in the men's locker room, a big deal there. And there will be no through traffic on the golf course from Memorial Drive. But the uh, road construction out there is great. People will cut across Memorial you know, to the uh, golf course, and they don't want that. And that's it. Okay. Do we have any others? I do have one um, report for um, Prowers Economic Prosperity. Um, we elected our, our officers for the new year 
for our new year. Uh, Linda Lujan will be our president, Rick Robbins, our vice president, Tyler Thrall, our treasurer, Tregan Marquez, secretary, um, Ron Cook, and I will stay on as representatives of the county and the, and the city of Lamar, and Joe Spitz is our um, member at large. Okay, great. Um, I did have a community member contact me on Friday and came by to visit me today. Uh, she brought me over a card. Uh, she had contacted me because they had a flag that was kind of from their family. They didn't have any use for it, but they wanted to donate it to the city. I just wanted to thank her. She gave me a little card that said, uh, thank you for taking good care of our community and wanted to thank the council for all that they do as well. It was uh, Deborah and Paul Jones. Uh, so I'd like to just take a moment to thank them for donating the flag to the city and for uh, thanking the, the council and myself for what we do with the community. So that was nice of them. So moving on, the next item on the agenda is a swearing in ceremony. We have uh, the oath of office for a new police officer, Jonah McSwan. Kyle, would you like to come up, Jonah? Okay, that worked good. Okay, better get my glasses so I can read, I guess. I'm come over two as well. Okay, Jonah, let's come back here. Please raise your right hand. I, Jonah McSwan, do solemnly swear that I uphold the Constitution of the United States. State of Colorado and the ordinances of the city of Lamar. And the state of Colorado and the ordinances of the city of Lamar. And do further swear to discharge the duties. And do further swear to discharge the duties of a police officer for the city of Lamar. Officer for the city of Lamar. To the best of my skill and ability, so help me God. To the best of my skill and ability, so help me. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you very much. We sign this one. Signature there. One more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next item on the agenda is uh, to do the public hearing for the hotel restaurant liquor license for Palace Tavern LTD, DBA Tavern 1301. So can we have a motion to move into the public hearing? So second. I have a motion and a second to move in the public hearing. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And votes as well. Do that. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. So we'll, we're now in the public hearing portion. Wanted to verify the proof of publication. Linda? Everything was posted or published in the newspaper and posted um, in a timely manner um, on or before May 10th, or excuse me, May 13th. Okay. Do we have any other remarks on that, or did you add anything? I I have nothing, Kyle. Well, we did an investigation into the, the manager and the owner, um, and everything came back just fine. So 
everything is good as far as we're concerned. Okay. All right. Any comments from the council? Question? I know there was a question about uh, TIP certification at one point uh, when council members asked if they would be, or if they have been TIP certified or any of that. We'll make sure. Uh, Okay. Actually, I should have asked you to just come up if you wouldn't mind. Sure, um, sure. What we were to do is uh, to ask, answer those questions if you wouldn't mind. Sure. Can you uh, state your name? Sure. Who you're with? Sure. I'm EJ Carpenter. Our company name is called Meat and Drink Limited. We're the owner of Fourth and Main Downtown Grill and Ray, the dish room in Burlington, and we'll be the company owner of Tavern 1301 at the historic Cow Palace. Okay. All right. The next item on the agenda, unless you have any other questions, Council, did you have any questions for us? No. So we would just uh, open the floor to anybody who would like to speak in favor of. So would you like to speak in favor of this? Pastor? Sure. Will this be my only chance to talk? Would you need me to talk? Or? Unless there's questions. Sure, no yes. problem. Um, we're pretty excited to bring that building back to life. Uh, we got involved in October of last year and didn't have a chance to come down in person until we got through our holiday seasons, Valentine's Day, Mother's Day. So we've been on site for the last couple of weeks and uh, ended up taking on quite a bit of the project for the whole hotel. So we're excited to bring the Cow Palace kind of back to life and go through and do some remodeling that's needed to be there. There's some timing that's a little bit out of our hands. We're going to redo the entire water system, HVAC. So there's some timing things that we just can't quite control as far as when we'll be open. But for the biggest part, we are, we're Eastern Colorado people. This is my partner, Ron Noldy, my partner, Ezra Gutierrez and his wife, Jenna, my wife, Renee. And uh, we love these communities. We love these communities. They're kind of on the edge and on the hubs. And we try not to look too far to the city when we look to expand. We try to look in places that we understand and people that we know and people that we've grown up around that are similar to the, how we how we grew up. And um, Lamar was on our radar. We also looked at Sterling. Uh, of course, Highway 34 and Ray is a very busy highway, but we've done a great job of bringing people to that town. Economically, our impact's been uh, really blown my mind a little bit. I've, I've either held a liquor license at least once since 1998, um, little town of Idelia. And when we take a look across the things that we impact in Burlington, we raise the occupancy rates of the hotels there uh, between 15 and 22% after our second, and third year, we change people's travel patterns. Um, people driving from Kansas City or Denver would change their patterns and stay in our town instead of stopping and going through. And that was another thing that made Lamar attractive to us. It's a different travel pattern. It's outside of the travel pattern that goes through our places and it's maybe a place that we could impact. Um, wages, uh, we employ about, we employ about 50, 52 people, the equivalent of about 28 full-time equivalent jobs. And we paid 1.6 million in wages last year. And so our average wage is pretty decent. And the way that's impacted our communities is a lot of people that work in our communities are right there. And if they have a little bit more to spend, that they have a little bit more to pass around. From an economic development standpoint, it's the best of both worlds. We have people that change their travel patterns, to maybe stay in our town, spend a little money, and we can increase that pot a little bit for the people that are here and provide those jobs. We'll probably provide between 25 and 40 jobs total between the hotel and the restaurant. And we've really seen that lift some people up. Uh, we pay pretty competitive wages. We give people a pretty good opportunity to do that. And those are the things that we've been the most proud of is to be able to impact our communities from an economic development standpoint where we can bring in some outside money and keep it inside this community. And so that's part of the reason that, that we really looked at Lamar. We're excited, to, we're excited to hire some local people. We're excited to bring some people back to this town. Historically, we can't always find um, specifically the talent in the kitchen from inside towns everywhere. So we have people that have moved from Omaha, from Oregon, from Orange County that have come into our systems and stayed and, and made a family. And so I would, I would guess we're going to bring two to three families to Lamar, outside of Lamar. And then of course, it's always our, our mission to develop some people that are local, that have ties to this area, to this county, that they can find an opportunity that they can maybe have that, that wasn't there. Sometimes we're, we're asked if we think that there'll be a competition problem or if there'll be things that we do um, that maybe might squeeze some people out. And in most areas we go into, there's simply not a place that does what we what we do. And so what we found is it's more of an addition than a divide, dividing a pie out there. 
that the, the food that we serve and the, and the atmosphere that we bring actually brings more people out to spend their money eating out. And so we haven't really found that that's caused any, any wrinkles or any problems with existing businesses. Um, but again, back to the fact that we're just super excited to kind of bring that icon up there on North Main Street kind of back to life and, and, and breathe some new life into it in the entire property. Is that good? Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Well, we're, we're excited to be here definitely. and we really appreciate the opportunity. Yes, we're excited to have you. Sure. What kind of restaurant? So we're an American restaurant. We do everything from scratch. We also bring in some fusion flavors from across the board. Uh, Ezra's our chef. He kind of oversees the, rest, the menus everywhere. He and his wife will be moving here to make sure that everything's done well here. And so we hand cut our steaks. We make all our own pasta sauces. Uh, we bring in the Southwest flair and the flavor. Um, there's a lot of that here, so we may not bring so much of that in, but we'll bring in our own style. We're particularly fans of the Oaxaca region in Mexico and bringing some of those flavors. But our core is beef, is burgers and steak. And uh, of course we branch out to pastas and, and all sorts of things. I think we have about 55 to 60 things typically on our menus to kind of cross utilize. We bring in fresh seafood, so we have that option. We have vegetarian options if people want that option. Um, but we, we have a pretty diverse menu. And it's from scratch. We do about absolutely everything from scratch. Our kitchen's usually alive from four in the morning until till we get out of there at 10 o'clock at night. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other questions for me? Okay. Seeing none, um, is there anybody else who would like to speak in favor of the approval of this license? <laughs> Just state your name and who you're with. Doug Draw, owner of the Cow Palace, one of the owners. Uh, I got turned in on to these guys a few months ago by a local banker that went up and visited Burlington and ate lunch and uh, heard great war stories, looked at their website. Uh, the concept was to lease the restaurant bar to, to these guys. And I went up and met with them and told them that uh, it's not that I was a control freak by any stretch, but we're a convention center. Uh, I, I had fears of leasing food and alcohol to somebody I didn't know that could cost me a convention, not just a few meals. And I told them the only way that they could feel my pain was to become part owners of the Cow Palace, which was a new concept to them. And uh, that's turned into new partners in the Cow Palace. So. The success of the bar and restaurant is in direct proportion to the success of the hotel. And they have spent an inordinate amount of money as partners on the hotel. They, they put a lot of money in their own bar and restaurant, but they brought a lot of new fresh money to the hotel. Uh, They're doing things that we hadn't planned to do. They decided we needed to make it uh, a diamond and not just kind of a shiny little rock. So I'm uh, excited to have them as additions to Lamar, I think the um, volume of revenue they'll generate to the town will be noticeable on your side of the ledger. It'll certainly be noticeable on our side. Uh, and then just the sheer number of people that will get employed between the hotel and, and the barn restaurant, um, we'll be pushing 70, probably 70 people total. So I'm all in favor of doing it. It's one of the smartest things I've ever done in my life, and I'm an old guy, so I've, I'm glad to have him. Okay, thank you. Okay, any questions? Or is there anybody else who would like to speak in favor of? Okay, so anybody would like to speak uh, opposed? Please state your name and... I'm Galen Burnett. My address is 800 South 6th Street here in Lamar. I'd like to thank you, the council and the community for allowing me to speak. Uh, Linda, I had a hard time. Uh, I went around the, the Cow Palace three times before I found where they, it was posted. I knew it was posted, but I just couldn't find it. Next time, don't stick it behind a black window, okay? I, I had a hard time finding it. I want to share with you guys that we do not need another tavern and bar. We've got plenty here already in our Lamar city. 
and our county in our area. This bar in the Cow Palace has been closed for a number of months. Has it been over a year? I think. And and our other our other uh, bar establishments, liquor establishments, have not been having problems with people getting in. They they've been able to service. They've been able to to meet the needs of alcohol consumption here in our area. I did talk with EJ and his wife this afternoon, and I appreciate uh, them talking with me. He has experience, as he said, of over 20 years of uh, being involved with a, with a liquor establishment. He said he told me that he knows the rules, and I would assume that that he has uh, got those down. But I want to remind you, the city council, and also EJ, that it only takes a quick, stupid little decision to cause all kinds of major problems. That can cause distress, pain, and even death. EJ and I talked about that, that he has had some experiences down over the last 20 some years where a stupid decision was made, and then there's some ramifications that we don't want. And so, you know, I, I appreciate his diligence and so forth there, but this is an opportunity that we have uh, to keep from that happening. A lot of people are not able to limit their drinking. They're not able to control it. They think, oh, wow, well, I can do this. I can, I can handle it. But others, have a difficult time controlling their alcohol consumption. It doesn't take much alcohol to cause problems in the bodies. The BAC that we've talked about in other times in the beginning, it kind of helps you, makes you feel better, raises your mood. But every ounce of alcohol that is coming in after that causes detrimental problems. It causes problems with your, your not you're not able to remember, you're not able to respond. And as it gets deeper, as you drink more, sometimes you can lose consciousness or even death. You have amnesia, you can't remember what you did. You have respiratory problems, vomiting, so forth there. And eventually it results in death. 39% of people who who have a stroke, have it because of alcohol consumption. That was something that I, that I just learned lately. You know, I don't like strokes. I, I saw a friend of mine here in Lamar yesterday at Big R. He's not near the man that he was a few months ago because he ended up having a stroke. More than 2 million people suffer from liver damage due to alcohol consumption. I saw one of my uncles die this way. Every organ in our body is affected by drinking, detrimentally affected. It affects our brains. Every ounce of alcohol kills brain cells. Many of those do not regenerate. The heart is affected also. It destroys that heart. The liver is affected. The pancreas is affected. All of these organs in our body is affected. And I'm not gonna take the time tonight, I don't have the time tonight, to talk to you about uh, drunk driving and you know drinking, I mean, driving under the influence of alcohol, the criminal activities that come with alcohol consumption. So I'd like to, to thank you for allowing me to share this with you tonight. And city council, I give you an opportunity to maybe do something that is good, that, that's not detrimental to our city. And so I'd recommend that you uh, deny their application. There are other restaurants in Lamar that are making good money off of the, without having alcohol. And I recommend that we uh, suggest to Mr. Carpenter and his uh, friends that that's the way they ought to go. Thank you. Okay, is there anyone else who would like to speak against? Okay, did you want to speak? 
in closing? Sure. I had a chance to visit with Galen earlier today, and I was glad I had that chance. Um, and we respect all views. We understand that we have carry a burden um, as a license establishment. And the best thing that we can do is be good stewards of those licenses. And um, we've had we've had two minor incidents in 23 years. One, I had a bartender that served a group of firemen just after two o'clock in the morning after they had fought fires till one, he shouldn't have done that. And I had a manager that missed the renewal period one time. And so we've never had a serving under the, under the legal age, um, the way that the state has worked. Um, we have more and more of a burden personally and professionally to make sure that we watch out over our, our staff and, that, and to make sure that we're not abusing our customers if they're not abusing themselves. And it's a burden we don't take very lightly. It's part of the reason Jenna is coming down with Ezra to kind of make sure that we carry on the things that we've established over the years to address those things and to make sure we get off on a good start as far as the liquor laws go. Um, again, we know we carry that burden and, and I appreciate your viewpoint on that. Um, to our product mix, historically in 23 years, we average about 81% food. And that's something we're proud of as well, about 19% alcohol. And it's just about the same every year in all of our places. So for instance, if we have a $24 average that a customer on average spends and our average drink is four to $5, when you balance those things out with our menu mix that uh, for the last 10 years, we've maybe, maybe averaged less than, a half, less than a glass of wine per meal. So I don't think that, the, that our atmosphere in our place is real conducive to the kind of abusive drinking. And we take it very seriously to make sure that that's not something that we condone or allow. Again, I appreciate you guys letting us speak on this and I come back to that. And I appreciate your opportunity to come up and rebut. Uh, as I said, we're here to we're here to be a conduit for the whole city, and we understand that there's a few points out there that may not match up with ours, and we appreciate that. So thank you so much for your time and allowing us to speak. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask. Do we have any questions, Council? Um, I, I would just like to add, if you don't mind, it was brought forth, I believe, by another council member about the tips. Mm -hmm. um, if I can make a recommendation that you didn't have a problem following through with that. Sure. You know, I would be pleased that if you did have your uh, those involved in serving the alcohol and sell and it be tip certified, if that's what it is, or tips approved sure. upon approval of this. Sure. And uh, I would say that if it's not, you know, if, if the employees are not certified or tips approved, and if I'm still sitting here, then I'll vote against it next year. Sure. I understand. If that's something the council in the city or the county um, requires, of course, we'll do that. And we'll encourage everybody to go through that. The hardest thing we've found of it besides food training, like where we are, we travel to Denver, or we travel to Sterling. Sometimes they have some little more local for the server training for the health code. That's a lot easier to get access to the tips classes and the, and the serve safe um, alcohol classes so far have only been offered in the city. And that's been the hard, the hardest thing to get up and get. And so, like I say, we do, we do really encourage people to follow along on the online classes that the Liquor Enforcement Division puts out. In fact, there's one tomorrow, I believe, that they archive that you can watch through. But the burden comes on when you're, when you're hiring people in. If you have 25 people, we have a certain training manual that we put everybody through, but it's getting access to those classes to where we can be certified. That's the biggest roadblock for us as far as requiring people to go to Denver for a class that isn't too often. So we're happy to do that, but that's that's been our burden in the past to get everyone certified. That day. Is a, is a regional resource that we haven't had access to. Thank you. You're Thank ready. you very much. You. Before you leave, Steve, Stephen Webster, he's a tip certified instructor. Thank you. Now. Perfect. Check with the police department. Yep, that'd be great. That'd be great. That'd be great because we could have enough people to start out with that we can make it worth the class. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Or you could actually do it online. And we can get certified then? Yeah, I was just looking it up right now. I know you mentioned something about online. And that's that's so, totally looking at the tips on that. I know that the state, what they give you in your car, basically, give you in Texas and some areas in Colorado, you get certification. We'll get right on that. Okay. All right. Any final questions? None. If we can, uh, I guess we need to exit the public hearing and then we can um, make a decision. Will we move on to public hearing? Second. Have a motion and a second to move out of the public hearing. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. aye.
motion to pass. Next item on the agenda would be to uh, do what would you like to do as far as the tavern license request? I move we approve the license. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the license. Are there any final questions? Seeing none, please vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimous. Thank you. All right, next, moving on, the next item on the agenda is amendment to parking regulations. Uh, this was brought on by um, Chief Miller. Would you like to speak on that? From last council meeting, uh, we had a citizen come in who was concerned about the parking in the 100 block of West Poplar Street. Um, we did talk to the business owner and encourage them to come in tonight. Um, I don't see him here, so I didn't, didn't think it was necessary to be here. Um, just kind of as an update also, the fire department went over and did a fire inspection concerning the oil that was being dumped in the street. Um, there was a violation of that. We've given them 30 days with Lance's help. We wrote him a letter, uh, gave him 30 days to clean that up. If they don't, then the city will clean it up for them and we'll send them a bill for the hazardous material cleanup. Um, I went over there, I believe it was last Friday, and there were no trucks parked over there. Um, I know one of the questions was, is could we have an ordinance um, concerning the parking of the trucks over there? So I found some examples um, from other towns in Colorado and then uh, Steve was good enough to provide me one he had from St. John. So I, I'm hoping that the problem has been uh, addressed. He came in the day after council, I think it was on a Tuesday and paid a rather large amount for parking tickets that we'd written in the past. Um, so I'm hoping that Mr. De Leon will just comply with this and we don't have to write a new rule or a new law. Um, I think we have plenty of those around anyways, but if we need to do that, that's something we can do. Um, the best way to do it would be to uh, direct it towards all commercial. Uh, right now, the one that we have is for residential open estates um, for trucks that are parking in our, in our neighborhoods, um, but we don't have anything necessarily regulating specifically commercial area. Um, we do have some that are on the books already concerning the amount of time um, we could utilize that. But my concern with that is I have to go there and show that that truck's been parked there for more than two hours. Um, and I, as you saw, my guys are busy enough um, rather than be running around over there every two hours to see if the trucks are moving or not. Um, and I, I talked with Lance about that too. Um, so I, I would much prefer not to have another ordinance or another law in the books um, to have to enforce something else. Um, but if that's what it comes down to, we can, we can sure write that. Uh, specifically for the commercial, and it would affect all the commercial districts in Lamar. Um, we put an exemption in there, basically, if they're loading or unloading, they would be fine. But if they're just parked there for a day or two, then that's where the issue would be become our concern. And I think I mentioned that last meeting is that, you know, it's we love all the businesses we have in the community. We want to encourage the business in our community, of course, but, you know, we have to follow those rules and be courteous to the other neighbors and this is one of those situations where if we make a decision or pass a new ordinance it's going to basically punish everybody in Lamar for one um, area or one individual we really don't want to have to do that so hopefully this will be taken care of. Lance did I get everything? Yeah I think he did it he got it all. all right. so I, I, I guess I had a question for you you sent in uh, two different ordinances which one of those do you think would be easiest to enforce? I think there um, were three. About that being an issue. Yeah, but. I think there were three or four. And I think that the easiest way to do it would be vehicle width. Um, so anything over seven and a half feet wide can be parked for more than two hours. Um, because we have some businesses there that the, the people who work there coming to park on the street. We don't want to limit that um, because they have to obviously go there for work. So I think the easiest way to do it would be the seven and a half foot wide restriction to park those and they couldn't be there for more than loading and unloading would be the cleanest way to do it. Okay. Do you have any other questions or comments? I, I just got a comment. I had the chance to uh, go through both of these here. Uh, the ordinances that you sent 
uh, sent over. Um, uh, I think there's they come across a lot of great points in here. Um, but as you said, I think it would punish those who don't deserve to be punished. But uh, uh, if it need be to come down to it where we have to, um, is it possible that we can somewhat take from one ordinance and add to another ordinance or combine them both to make it special just for Lamar? Absolutely. And I mean, that way not everybody is punished, but when it's just going after those certain individuals that are actually uh, uh, taking advantage of the situation and making it bad for everybody. I mean, because when I read it, I mean, a lot of great points in there. You know, in both of them, but I thought, man, that's kind of awfully uh, stern in that one. I don't like that, but the previous parts of it, I really like a lot, and and so forth. So that was just a thought, you know, or a concern. If we could do that, if needed. Yeah, they, those are just examples of what other towns are doing. So we can make it whatever we want it to be, um, as long as it's enforceable. I, I don't. We can make it however we want. Um, what fits us best. We've done that before. What fits our town best is is what's best for our town. So um, I think. I hope that this has solved its own problem, but we'll continue to um, encourage patrols over in that area for any trucks that are stored or illegally parked on the roadway. If for the future we have to revisit this, is there a way we can put a clause in there that says exception, like written exception from the city, or if you know what I mean? Like, like all right, this business will get an exception from from this, and can be revoked at any time. If, I think that's necessarily tough to do. Um, I also think you want to be careful with treating one business different than the rest of the businesses. That's why when you're talking ordinance, sure, you want a specific, you want it to be specific enough to address the issue, but you don't want it so specific that it just isolates one business. And if you start giving exceptions, I think you're benefiting other businesses over the others. And I don't think the city wants to get into that issue. Well, well going through these two ordinances that was presented to us, it explained that if there was certain circumstances that they would go ask for a permit for that certain circumstance to take care of what they need to take I care think of. Some of that was like construction, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So somebody's obviously, if somebody's doing construction, we're going to know they're doing construction and we're not going to bother them because they have to be there. Uh, but it's not just parking a commercial vehicle on a roadway and then leaving it for however long you want to leave it there. Um, these guys, they've done it over here whenever they were redoing the Mason building. They, they had that thing blocked for seemed like a month, but it wasn't that long. But same thing, they came in, worked with us, worked with Craig. We got a plan in place for everybody so the traffic could still flow. Um, I think that we could still do that. That would, in my opinion, be the unloading, loading kind of a part of the, the ordinance that we would be discussing. Thank you. Well, hopefully we won't have to do that either way, so. Okay. Anything else, Council? Any other questions? We would just want to table this until it is needed again. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you thank very you. much. Okay. The next item on the agenda is ordinance 1245, which is an ordinance establishing an advisory board of public safety for the city of Lamar, Colorado. So there's been some talk about this for a while. We've been working on this off and on. Um, Joe Gonzalez, our council member, and Rafael Rodriguez both uh, served on the committee um, creating this ordinance. And this ordinance is to create the public safety board. So, do we need to read this ordinance? Is that correct? So, it's our ordinance. So, this is for the first reading. So, I will uh, do the first reading and then we'll bring it back for the second reading and the final approval that <laughs> we can move forward. If there are any changes or corrections, we will have that time in between to make those before the second. All right. We're going to get ready for this. Ordinance number 1245, an ordinance establishing an advisory board for public safety for the city of Lamar, Colorado. Whereas the city of Lamar promotes open communication and collaboration between the citizens, the city police, and fire departments, and that whereas the creation of a public safety advisory board will further transparency and trust among the citizenry and the public safety departments of the city, and whereas the city council finds that it's necessary and in the best interest of the citizens of Lamar to create an advisory board to advise and recommend areas and topics of study related to public safety operations, best practices, and continue to promote positive relationships between citizens and the police and fire departments, 
And whereas the city council recognizes that the board of public safety will be advisory in nature and provide an opportunity for citizens input and review of uncertain unresolved complaints that may arise from time to time and provide an opportunity for public input and comment. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Lamar, Colorado, as follows. Section 1, creation of the Board of Public Safety. There is hereby created an advisory board of public safety for the purpose of providing input to the Chief of Police, Fire Chief, City Administrator, and City Council as follows. A, review certain unresolved citizen complaints after the proper internal administrative process has concluded. B, recommend to the administrative staff to the City certain policy changes, amendments, implementation of new policies and capital purchases. C, provide a conduit to share the concerns and needs of both citizens of the city and the police and fire departments. D, continue to promote communication, understanding and relationships between the police department, fire department and the public. Section two, board membership and comp compensation. The board of public safety shall consist of five members. Members of the board shall be required to undergo a review process by the chief of police, fire chief, city administrator, who will make a recommendation to the city council for formal appointment to the board. Appointment or removal requires a majority vote by the city council. Board members shall be A, appointed for four year terms, staggered terms. The initial appointment of boards shall provide for three members to be appointed for four year terms and two members to be pro appointed for two term, two year terms. B, be subject to remove for any reason the city council considers sufficient. C, reside within the city limits of the, the city of Lamar. Loss of residency of a member shall cause for immediate forfeiture of office and vacancy shall occur. D, consent to a thorough background check. E, have an empirical understanding of police and fire operations. F, the city council may, but is not required to appoint one of its own members or the city administrator to the board. G, not be a member of the city's police or fire department. H, not be compensated for membership, but may at the discretion of the city administrator receive training that will be paid for by the city. Section three is meetings. The board shall meet at least quarterly at a time and location convenient to the members of the board and the public and shall comply with all notice requirements of the city. A simple majority of the appointed members shall constitute a quorum. The board shall A, elect the chairman and vice chairman, B, require, require that the chairman or majority of the board be able to call a meeting, C, have the ability to call special meetings, D, with the assistance of the police department or fire department staff, prepare, approve, and distribute agendas and meetings, E, not have the authority to obligate the city financially or otherwise, F, not make public statements on behalf of the city, G, when acting within the scope of their appointments, comply with all applicable provisions of the city charter. H, not exercise any authority over personnel matters. Section four is conflict. All ordinances, resolutions, bylaws, and regulations of the city of Lamar in conflict with the provisions of this ordinance are hereby repealed. Section five, severability. If any section, paragraph, clause, or provision of this ordinance shall be held invalid and unenforceable or of no legal effect by a court of competent jurisdiction, the invalidity of such section, paragraph, or clause shall not affect any other provision of this ordinance. This would be introduced, read, and full, passed on first reading, and order published this, I guess that would be the 24th day of May. Okay. With that read, what is the pleasure of the council? And then we approve the ordinance. Before, I'll second that. On first reading. I have a question for the, okay. on this. Uh, it doesn't state where the chapter is going to fit in with our other ordinance. It just starts with section one. So I didn't know if it's going to be at the end, like uh, would be, it looks like chapter 32 of our ordinance or where it's going to be located. Yeah. That I did not know. Okay, and we can. So you can correct that correct for the and second. And then, yes. Okay. So would you like to amend your motion with that correction, or or do we need I to do that? I don't think we need to do that because you read it, so we can approve it on first reading. We'll make the changes, and we'll approve with changes. Okay. 
I didn't catch whether you had it ordered in your motion to publish. Approve and publish. Thank you. Okay, I just didn't hear it, so. I said it. Okay. okay. We have a motion or a second. Second that. We have a motion and a second to approve and publish ordinance number one, two, four, five. Any final questions? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 A vote okay. same sign. Motion passes unanimous. Next item on the agenda, new business is overnight camping in Willow Creek Park for the Lamarland Swim Meet. Uh, this was brought in by Chief Miller. Would you like to speak on this? Sure. So I was contacted uh, about the Lamarland's camping in the park. You know, they have their uh, regional meet and then the state meet. Um, those dates are June 18th to June 20th of 2021 for the regional meet, and then August 5th through the 8th for the state swim meet. Um, just, they've been doing this for several years, and they're always very good, quiet people, and always follow our rules. I don't think we've ever had a problem with anybody there because the kids got to get up and swim the next day. So um, they're generally very well behaved. Okay, so this will be for both. Right. right. For both meets. Move we approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve overnight camping in Willow Creek Park on the stated dates. Any final questions? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimous. Next item is to renew the application with Colorado Surplus Property Agency, brought in by Chief Pilgrim. We've had this. Uh, agreement since 2012. Um, what this is is for the entire city to be able to access surplus federal property. Um, and we can then utilize that. We get it at a very large discount as to us going out and purchasing it. Um, it lapsed, I believe in 2018, they just contacted me and said, hey, we should probably renew this. So um, we would like to renew it so we can continue to um, access those properties or those pieces of property that they basically give to us. What is the cost to that? Nothing. Nothing? And how often do we use it? It was used quite frequently in the beginning, um, and then it kind of, everybody forgot about it. Okay. We still have property from them, the police department does, and I believe other departments do too, but I know we still have property from them. Um, we have to do an inventory every year and turn it back into them to say, yeah, we still have these, these pieces of property. So. Um, I when I had to get all the signatures from department heads and they said, oh, yeah, I remember that. I need to get back on there and look at that. So I think it'd be good. It's a good tool. It's good equipment and it's dirt cheap compared to us normally purchasing. Well, do you think that I can be added to that list since you're obligating funds? Absolutely. Okay. Is this? Okay. You got no, that's from the 1033 program. Is this a, sorry, a year to year contract? It doesn't have this. I believe it's every three. Have you looked at the contract at all? Yeah, uh, I mean, given that there's no cost in the contract, I'm struggling to see where there's a financial obligation for multiple years. So it doesn't cost us anything. We, we If we get something, we purchase that. Um, at a discounted rate. So okay. we're not every year we don't have to make another payment. It's just if we purchase items. I don't see it as a multi year financial obligation of the city then. Okay. okay. Any other questions? What, what kind of equipment do we currently have? We have two MP5s, so they're nine millimeter submachine so guns. They're not machine guns, fully automatic, they're semi-automatic, um, but that's what we have from them in the police department specifically. Other departments I couldn't answer yet. I don't have a clue. We need to go out sometime and I'll show you what they are, what they look like so you can understand them. I'm just thinking uh, for the college perspective, we're always looking for um, surplus equipment and I'm just wondering if it, the college knew about absolutely it. they could there's furniture there's you name it they have it on there um i think the street department's got some stuff from them uh, i i can't tell you what it was but 
they, they have anything you can imagine is on there. Um, the problem is you got to go get it. Um, Springs has a lot of it uh, in Port Carson. That's where a lot of it comes from. Okay. But that's the problem. They'll ship it to you, but it's kind of tough to get them to ship it to you. <clears throat> Kyle, I got a question. When this stuff out, when the surplus outlives its life, uh, do we get to put it up for an auction with Purple Wave or another, or do we have to return it back to them? I can't speak to their guns. We have to track forever. Um, so as far as the other property, I don't know if that, I would assume that becomes our property because we pay them for it. Um, but as far as the guns, which is what I'm familiar with, we have to track those for as long as we have them. Well, I was just along the thoughts of like maybe street equipment or something like that, you know. For I can't answer that. I don't know the okay. answer to that. Oh, thank you. Okay. Well, it's the council's pleasure. I make a motion we renew the application. Second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second to renew the application. Any final questions? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimous. Thank you. Okay, next item on the agenda is to approve Central Security Communications Incorporated Alarm Monitoring Service Contract for services at two City Lamar buildings located at 104 East Parmenter and 407 East Olive. <laughs> this was brought in by Anthony Aguilera and Craig Brook. Craig, would you like to speak on this? I would. Uh, good evening, Council. <laughs> This was actually uh, during John Sutherland's tenure, and it was brought to my attention through some cleaning up of paperwork that we had never got a signed contract with them uh, to do the monitoring. The previous company was charging us substantially more and not taking care of the equipment. So this company came on board and uh, we're now trying to get them hooked up for the next two years. They monitor the sprinkler, the fire alarm, and uh, it's 24 hours. Uh, it's tied into our SIRSA insurance as well as the building itself. And where is the contract? Well, that is there a I couldn't hear you. I didn't see a contract attached. Okay. I just got them Friday night late, so I mean, are, we've, are we've we been talking about the uh, uh, terms of alarm monitoring service. No, that's that's only a portion of the contract. OK, we should probably at least allow that last to look at it, especially since it's a two year. We need to make sure the language is in there and what the cost is. Right. It, you know, it, this is one that we've had in service for since 2019 is that right correct so it's occurring the, they're currently the doing it actively for us yes so could we approve with your final approval please? well i only thought is we're going to need to do an addendum to it if it's a two-year contract that uh it, depending on the termination language in there just saying that it's an appropriate adding an appropriation clause to it if there's not one in there so that would be my only issue it's just that Adding that the appropriation, yeah, that would be a, okay. Or can we just approve it as a one year and then one year at a time? Well, I mean, I don't know what they're like. I said, if they're set with two years, I don't know if they. He's real flexible. He wanted to do a five year term, and I said, I don't think that's going to fly. I think we should go with a two year. So that's why he picked two year. But they're currently. This is their third year of doing it right now. Yeah, they started in 19, they did. So they did a portion of 19, all of 20, and half of 20. Correct. We just so like I, to make sure we don't believe that if we hold off on approving it until the next council meeting, it's going to be an issue because they, they are truly doing the monitoring. So then we can table it until next council, mm -hmm. until Lance has a chance to go okay. through it. Okay. Yeah, yeah right. I think that's probably the best procedure table it approve it next time great so and you have the contract i do have it okay thank you there's actually two of us one for 104 which is the library 
and one for including the user. Okay. Okay. All right. I guess we'll table that. Next item on the agenda is to award bid number 41-008, contract to supply and install the Fort Bend Canal Death Stream Bridge and ADA concrete ramps on both sides to Daniels Construction LLC. Greg, would you like to speak on that? Yes, this is a uh, on, this has been an ongoing project, and one of the things that Anne Marie has uh, always tried to strive the city for is to connect the college with the city. This is a bridge that would go over the Fort Bend Canal down by the college right across from the mission. Uh, it's very dangerous for anybody to walk on that old bridge. So by putting a pedestrian bridge there and making a handicap ramp on both sides, it kind of ties our, we're almost there to making the east side ADA accessible all the way from the college and Pizza Hut. So we're missing a few areas, but this was one big piece of it. I move we approve the bid and allow the mayor to sign a contract with Daniels Construction. I'll second it. Mine is, we haven't seen the contract. Oh, it's not. the same contract that we've been using we need to time and time and again. Yeah. And last time he approved it because we've been using the same one. Okay, we need to see it. That's fine. Okay. With Lancey's approval. Well, right. We need to still. Did you not get it during the bid process, no. the contract? We haven't seen it. I mean, did they not? Did you not have one at the bid? No, the mid all we process? are doing right now is awarding the bid. All we did was open bids. Okay. And didn't see a contract. So I, I know it's on here. I didn't know if you had. I did the bid process. Okay. And so we, we just had need to approve bids, the bid. Open the bids that he's got in there to approve the contract, and we haven't seen them. Okay. So and I know it's the same the one bid. we use, but we still need to have him. Okay, so we need to approve the bid. Open the award the bid, award yeah, the bid. and then you can go ahead and put the language in there upon his approval of the contract, but we have not seen a contract and we need to see. Okay, so would you like to modify your motion to just award the bid? I move we award the bid to Daniels Construction and um, with Lance's approval, Approval of the contract allow the mayor to sign it. Okay, I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Are there any final questions? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Oh. The motion passes in. Thank you. Okay. Uh, miscellaneous, do we have any comments or questions on Facebook or any of the posts that we need to comment on or address? No? Okay. I, and then, uh, go ahead. I got a lot of Facebook on traffic. Yes. Feeding on 14, second, six. You know, running stoplights on ocean six the trucks i mentioned that to kyle earlier he could bring it up and he would explain some of this stuff would you mind kyle so um we did do a post and i asked uh, martha to post it somebody uh citizen had asked if we could do something to make people aware, hey, it's summertime, kids are out out of school, they're out playing, um, please watch your traffic. And in doing so, of course, we started getting comments about all the different areas that have concerns. So that's where this came from. But. Sure, so um, people, I always encourage people to call these in whenever they're occurring. Um, if they're willing to go to court and testify, we can write a ticket on their behalf. So if they come in, they say, I saw this car run at a stop sign, we can then go contact that, car and write a ticket on their behalf uh, for them doing that. Speeding is a little bit different, uh, but as far as the stop signs, they can, they're can they welcome to do that. Um, even if they're seeing people speeding, if they call it in, I can then use that data to say, look, during 3 and 6 p.m. in this area, we're having a lot of speeding complaints, and then I can get officers in that area. Um, 
with the 14th street that we addressed that several months ago. I know that um, I get the guys were sitting up there. I saw them several times sitting up on 14th street, but I'll encourage them again to cover these areas the 6th street, 12th street, 14th street and 6th and Oak. Is that right? Second. Yeah, second. And second street. That's second right. street yeah. Yeah. And I, I will encourage you guys to increase patrols in those areas, but I also encourage people to call it in whenever it's occurring, um, because then we can kind of use that data to figure out when they're occurring and have more directed patrols rather than just randomly driving through there here and there to hopefully catch somebody. But if we can narrow it down to an hour, two hours, then I can have directed patrols in that better at that time. Right. He also said memorial between the hospital and the I drive the through there every day and I don't see a, I mean, here and there, there's people that are going too fast, um, but the vast majority of them are. I feel like it's, it's farther south. They really start to cook about south of college, oh, actually, is where they start okay. to pick up speed. Okay. Yep. Well, I think there's a few areas that are just kind of so, um, you know, it's hard for the officers to be in 15 places at once. And it's like they know that nobody's around. So they blaze through there, especially on Memorial <clears throat> Drive because it's wide open. And but I think one of the one of the largest complaints that I saw on Facebook was the, the semi traffic coming in north and south of town where they just come barreling in. I know we put up those electric signs or the digital signs to show them their speed, but I don't know if there's anything else we can do about that. We can continue to enforce it. I, I think that that's a lot of what we have to do is be out and be visible and people see the flashing lights and they tend to slow down a little bit. So um, we can also maybe get the radar sign or the radar trailers out again, put them on Main Street and set them out for a little bit. They don't last a whole long time, but we can only get three or four days out of them before we have to recharge them. So that's another option. For, for general information, I believe Memorial is closed getting on or off 287. Clear out, yes, clear out it's past the golf course. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, is, that's completely clear. It is closed. So if you're trying to bypass construction, forget it. Yeah. You just have to turn around. You have to turn around. Yep. And then people come back even faster. Yeah. Make up time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any other questions for before? Okay, the only other thing I had is, of course, on uh, June 7th, we'll be having our um, work session for the city council. Just wanted to do a reminder. We'll have uh, Sam Light from CERSA to do training for governmental employees and representatives. And then afterwards, we will be having a, an executive session to go over the uh, applicants for the city administrator. That's all we have. So, I'd like to entertain the motion. Adjourn. Second. Here we have a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimous, and we thank you for joining us.